So, in short, if you ever feel the uncontrollable urge, all you do is run over and put your snotch in the snander grab, then you run over back to the ocean with your offspring before the ball of time I smash you. Any questions? Snits is a game with an interesting history. Back in 1976, Dragon Magazine started being published by Tactical Studies Rules Inc., the creators of Dungeons & Dragons. This periodical would feature articles about D&D, including new adventures, classes, and answers to fans' questions. Eventually, every issue of Dragon started to include comics, a simple board game, and a special game supplement, such as a cardboard cutout castle, along with its D&D articles. Enter Tom Wham. Wham got his start in the board game industry by publishing his slightly skewed games in Dragon. Games like The Awful Green Things from Outer Space, Vile 13, Snit Smashing, and Snit's Revenge were all quirky in one way or another, and featured Wham's own cartoons and illustrations. Since that time, Wham's games were published by TSR as standalone boxes. Unfortunately, TSR ran out of money in 1996 and were acquired by Wizards of the Coast in 97. With his publishers now gone, Wham decided to work with creator Steve Jackson to publish through his company. In 2003, Steve Jackson Games published Snits as two games in one compact box, keeping with the Steve Jackson iconic conservative box style. Inside the box is a handful of Snit tokens, each with a unique picture illustrated by Wham himself. You also get two dice and markers for showing who goes first. On the board is a comic explaining the basic concept and story behind the game. One day the gods were bored, so Balbus created a world and populated it with creatures in the images of his friends, the Balatamas and the Snit. The Snits enjoy their time in the ocean until they feel the sudden urge to reproduce, so they run out and put their snotch in the snandergram. The Balatami, on the other hand, are bored, so they smash the Snits as they scurry past and keep score. Today I'll be the blue clan while Danny will be the red clan. That means I have to smash your Snits while avoiding my own. Let's do it! And now we reveal our secret orders. I choose to move the snandergrab closer to my snits and even on top of some of them. Ah, but in their scurry for safety, they overshot and land on top of the snandergrab instead. And wouldn't you know it, my smash lands right on them. Ah, that's okay. I still have two snits remaining. Well then, let's write down new secret orders and start the next bound. Whoever made it under the snandergrab by the end of the sixth bound reproduces and dashes back to the sea while avoiding the Thomas. This cycle happens twice, doesn't it? Yep, and in the end there are two victories. The first victory goes to the person who smashed the most rival snits, while the snits victory goes to the person who got the biggest family of their own color. That's nice and all, but isn't there more to life than just the snander grab? Indeed there is. Feast your eyes on Snits Revenge. <laughs>